You're listening to Espresso Knowledge. I'm your host, Sensei of Stories. Every week, I adapt research stories from Canadian universities for my podcast. The length of each story is the time it takes me to make a shot of espresso. This week, we have stories from Western, Alberta, Calgary, Waterloo, and Queens. Enjoy. Divorce rates in Canada are declining. Lead researcher and Western sociology professor Rachel Margolis says it's partly because more people are getting married, and they're getting married later. This means possibly stronger relationships or partners with more education and income. Margolis' study is the first new data into divorces in Canada since 2008. And this is important information. Marriages and divorces are a basic measure of how families and societies are changing. Margolis has recommended to Statistics Canada that they collect information on divorces through its monthly labor force survey. It already uses data to make decisions regarding jobs, education, and income support. And she reasons that since changes in marriage are so related to changes in employment, household structure, and poverty, there might be an interest in collecting information on marriages and divorces. This story was adapted for Espresso Knowledge from Paul Main's Western News article from Western University. Virtual assistants are unable to provide users with reliable and relevant information on medical emergencies. University of Alberta research, led by Christopher Picard, questioned Alexa, Google Home, Siri, and Cortana on first aid topics. Google Home performed the best. It recognized topics with 98% accuracy and provided advice acceptable within treatment guidelines 56% of the time. Alexa came second, and Cortana and Siri performed the worst. Two-thirds of medical emergencies occur within the home, and virtual assistants are showing promise to get first aid information to people quickly. But there's work to be done. Researchers found that most virtual assistants gave incomplete descriptions from web pages, In some cases, the advice was downright misleading. Picard hopes that software makers partner with first aid organizations to develop accurate responses for serious situations. This story was adapted for Espresso Knowledge from Gillian Rutherford's folio article from University of Alberta. University of Calgary researchers are partnering with Waseda University researchers in Tokyo, Japan to understand the link between neighborhood communities and cardiovascular health, or CVD. Neighborhood design and planning is important for people's social, mental, and physical health, including whether or not they develop chronic diseases later in life. But we really don't know how neighborhood features such as population density, transportation, parks, and access to healthy foods affect CVD. Japanese cities, for example, are dense and compact, while Canadian environments have a lower density. The Calgary-Tokyo team will test neighborhood characteristics on CVD risk factors such as physical activities, obesity, and sedentary behavior in both cities. The evidence will help develop interventions and design communities to promote cardiovascular health and prevention. This story was adapted for Espresso Knowledge from Brittany DeAngeli's Calgary News article from University of Calgary. Most cannabis consumers in Canada do not understand what the THC numbers on packages of cannabis edibles really mean. University of Waterloo researchers surveyed nearly 1,000 Canadians aged 16 to 30. Most consumers could not identify if a cannabis edible contained low or high levels of THC based on the label. Effective THC labeling and packaging could help reduce accidental overconsumption of cannabis edibles and adverse events. 
both of which have increased in places with legalized recreational cannabis. Health Canada required cannabis packages to list ingredients and product types, potency, weight in grams, and the percentage of THC or CBD, but not symbols or intuitive labeling on THC levels. The study found that symbols and words are more effective in helping consumers understand THC potency and approximate serving sizes for cannabis products. This story was adapted for Espresso Knowledge from Waterloo News, Waterloo University. Incoming female CEOs tend to negotiate much better severance agreements than men, according to research from Queens, Boise State, and Texas A&M universities. Severance agreements specify the amount paid to CEOs in case of termination. Researchers asked if the agreements reflected the heightened concern of prospective female CEOs. Many feel vulnerable and more harshly judged compared to their male colleagues. For company boards recruiting women into higher positions, the study encourages severance agreements to be used as a recruiting tool to compensate women for obstacles that they will inevitably face. The results also show that women have more bargaining power in the employment negotiation process than they may have previously thought. Women can secure greater severance guarantees without trading cash. They identify risks and expect the reward for taking it on. This story was adapted for Espresso Knowledge from Queen's University's Pierre Chaguenot's article in The Conversation. Thanks for listening. Check out researchstoryteller.com for links to this episode's articles. I'm your host, Sensei of Stories.